Welcome to the Criminal Law and Procedure Lecture Series. At the end of each slide, there will be a 10-second delay. Use this time to stop the lecture and take your notes. When you are done, push play to continue. This lecture will begin in 5 seconds. Welcome to Criminal Law and Procedure Lecture 1.3 on Elements of Criminal Law, and let's talk about hurricanes. Not the Carolina hurricanes. Now that's a hurricane. Actually, that's a tropical cyclone. And we have tropical cyclones all over the world. Well, how do you know if you're looking at a tropical cyclone? It's easy. All tropical cyclones have four specific elements. They rotate. They are an organized system of clouds and thunderstorms. They originate over tropical or subtropical waters. And they have closed low-level circulation. If you can prove those four elements, you have a tropical cyclone, and then you can do anything else you want to with that storm. Want to name it? How about names based on location? Atlantic and Eastern Pacific Ocean cyclones are called hurricanes. Northwestern Pacific Ocean cyclones are called typhoons. And South Pacific and Indian Ocean cyclones are called cyclones. How about names based on intensity? Tropical depressions have winds of 38 miles per hour or less. Tropical storms have winds between 39 to 73 miles per hour. Hurricanes have winds between 74 to 109 miles per hour. And major hurricanes have winds higher than 110 miles per hour. But it doesn't matter what you name these storms. They are not tropical cyclones unless you can meet these four elements. This same idea holds true in criminal law. And there are five elements that must be met to show that an offender has committed a criminal act. With that said, let's go to the next slide. The whole point of a criminal law is to tell people what they cannot do in society. Because of this, we need to be real clear when telling people what they can and cannot do. All criminal laws are designed using a set pattern in which a series of conditions or elements must be met. With one exception, there are five elements of criminal law that must be met to prove the culpability of an offender. We have mens rea, the guilty mind, actus reus, the guilty act, concurrence, proximate cause, and corpus delecti, actual harm. These five things together equal a criminal offense. Then there's that exception. The exception to the rule are strict liability crimes. These crimes do not require proof of mens rea, or the guilty mind, but they do require proof of actus reus, proximate cause, and corpus delicti. Go to the next slide. Like in math or science class, we need to break our criminal law formula down into its elements or parts to better understand it. We're also going to use an example to watch our formula in action. And our example is Code of Virginia section 18.2-462, which states, any person who actively participates in or is a member of a criminal street gang and who knowingly and willfully participates in any predicate criminal act committed for the benefit of, at the direction of, or in association with any criminal street gang shall be guilty of a class 5 felony. That is a ton of information. So let's break this statute down into its elements and we start with element 1, mens rea. Mens rea is the guilty mind of a person or the intent to commit a criminal act. And there are two types of intent that we find in criminal law. General intent is shown by words like knowingly, willfully, willingly, or recklessly. And all of these words are generally defined by statute and case law. But sometimes we need to be precise with our language. Specific intent is clearly stated in the law. For example, intending to commit a specific act. I intended to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. 
So let's look at our statute and decide if this is a general or specific intent crime. We see the words knowingly and willfully. This is a general intent crime. There's a couple of other things we need to know about mens rea. Not all laws include a mens rea statement, but it is assumed that the legislature intended its inclusion. So, if you see any mala in se or inherently bad crime, you can assume that the legislator wanted the prosecutor to prove the intent of the offender. Finally, we have strict liability crimes. Remember, this was the exception. They do not require mens rea. For example, you are guilty of bringing a gun into a school even if you didn't know that you had the gun in your possession. It doesn't matter whether or not you intended to bring the gun into the school. You're just guilty. Go to the next slide. Now that we know what a person must be thinking when they violate a law, it's time to see what they actually have to be doing. And that's element two, actus reus. Here's our Code of Virginia section, and we know that a person must knowingly and willfully do something, that's the mens rea, to violate this general intent statute. Actus reus is the guilty act that is prohibited under the law. Prohibited acts are specifically set forth in criminal law so that people know exactly what is prohibited. We don't want someone to come in the court and go, I didn't know I couldn't do that because it wasn't written down somewhere. So let's find all the bad acts in our Code of Virginia section. A person must actively participate in or be a member of a criminal street gang. And then you have to participate in a predicate criminal act which was committed for the benefit of, at the direction of, or in association with any criminal street gang. Those are all of the bad acts. You have to prove that the offender did all of the bad acts listed in the statute to secure a guilty verdict. Here's the thing. An offender must actually commit the act to be convicted of violating the law. Attempting to commit an unlawful act but not succeeding is not enough to violate the law. But this may violate a different set of laws that we're going to learn next class called inchoate or incomplete crimes. Here you have to show that an offender did all of those bad acts in order to secure a guilty verdict. Go to the next slide. Now that we can prove what the person was thinking and doing, it's time to move to element three, concurrence. Mens rea and actus reus must occur concurrently or at the same time for an offender to be guilty of committing a crime. What does that mean? Well, let's look at Code of Virginia section 18.2-46.2 and break that section down into its parts. We know that the mens rea is knowingly and willfully. We know that the actus reus or bad acts are to be involved in a street gang, to participate in a criminal act that was committed for the benefit of, at the direction of, or in association with the gang. Here's the thing. All of this must be present at the time the crime was committed. So you need to be involved in a street gang, but you need to knowingly and willfully participate in a criminal act that was committed for the benefit of, at the direction of, or in association with the gang. Here's what happens if you cannot prove concurrence. Merely thinking about committing a crime is not enough for someone to be actually guilty of committing a crime. You can think all you want about committing crime, but if all you're doing is thinking about it, you are not guilty of anything. Also, committing a guilty or prohibited act is not enough if the accused person did not have the intent to commit a crime. You can do a lot of things that would violate the law, but if you didn't intend to violate the law, you are not guilty of anything. Go to the next slide.
there are two more elements that need to be satisfied before we can find someone guilty of committing a crime. Here's section 182-462 of the Code of Virginia. Here's our mens rea. Here's our actus reus or guilty act. This is our concurrence. And now it's time to talk about element four, proximate cause. The offender's actions must be the proximate or immediate cause of the criminal harm. What does that mean? The offender must be the cause of the criminal act or there is no crime. There is no crime if harm occurred, but it's not because of the defendant's actions. If the defendant didn't actually cause the crime to occur, the defendant is not liable. Also, proximate cause, this is different than probable cause, which is an issue we will discuss in criminal procedure. Finally, we have to talk about corpus delecti. Not that type of corpus. Corpus delecti, or actual harm, must be proven to show that there was a victim. We need to have a victim of a crime. Well, who can be a victim? Victims can include, but are not limited to, people, groups, entities, and businesses. And society itself can be a victim as well. We call that type of crime a victimless crime. Thank you for watching this lecture, and I look forward to seeing you in class.